Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Make Simple. In this video, I will be sharing some tips and techniques on how to work with variable viscosity based on proximity to the collider. Hope you like it and let me know if you have any questions. So let's dive in. The setup is pretty simple. We have the collider already set up and then we have a, a meter on top of the geometry that's going to be pulling some fluid and if we go into the sub level and we take a look at the meter it's just a sphere with a mountain moving left to right uh, then we have the flip source and then we have a wrangle that we want to be using just to set up a really low initial viscosity and some noise so it looks a bit more organic and also make sure in the flip solver to enable viscosity and viscosity by attribute so we can use that initial value of three so the process to update the viscosity value of the points that are getting closer to the geometry is pretty simple. We want to go into the geometry level, into the collider. And once we are here, we're going to create a scatter node. Connect to the out. Uh, let's go up with the point count. Uh, let's try 3000. And once we have a lot of points, now we can create an attribute wrangle and set up the viscosity to a higher value. Let's try viscosity equal uh, maybe 400. And now we can create a null so we can uh, use an object merge to bring this information into the dotnet. I also want to make a more viscous the fluid colliding with the ground. So I'm gonna go and create a grid and position this grid in the center, maybe make it a bit smaller. So I want to move this uh, just there in the center. And now let's make this four by four. And this is looking good. So once we are here, we can do the same we just did with the geometry and create a scatter node. We're gonna again try to have a bit uh, more points. So let's try 4,000. And now we can duplicate the attribute wrangle and we can try a different value, maybe a bit lower. Let's try 100. And now we can merge uh, these two set of points so we can bring this information into the flip simulation. Back to the DOMnet, the only thing we need to do is to create a sub solver and connect this in the last input of the flip solver. Uh, and now we can go inside the sub solver and we're just going to create an object merge to bring that viscosity. So we're gonna go into the bus node and then bring the out viscosity. And now we're gonna create an attribute transfer so we can transfer and update this information. We're gonna set the viscosity attribute, connecting this into a second input, type viscosity. Let's make sure to switch this to point just in case. And now we're gonna be able to play with some of these values to adjust the, the distance. Uh, let's start with 0.1, something pretty low. So let's visualize the viscosity attribute so we have a better idea what is going on under the hood. So we want to click on viscosity and then uh, activate the visualizers and then we can edit the viscosity uh, the range. So it's going to be for, from 3 to 400 and when it's 3 it's going to look uh, more purple and when it gets to 400 it's going to look more reddish so now we can hit play and see what's going on and as you can see now we are transferring the value of the scatter points we did on the geometry from in, in the sub level uh, so in this case the the layer is a bit thick so i want to uh, go lower on the distance threshold so i'm gonna go a bit uh, with a lower value because i just want a thin layer of thick uh, fluid as the the collision happens uh, because i want i still want some splash in this case it's two things so i'm gonna go a bit higher and we can also play with the blend width that's gonna smooth the attribute transfer so we can go with a low value and kind of find like a like a balance between the distance and how much we want to blend these two attributes uh, and again, this is looking pretty good. We, now we have like a like a thick fluid when the collision is happening, so it's gonna be more sticky, but still we have some fluid pouring on the side. 
And again, you can play with this. It's up to you, depending what you are looking for. Uh, so I'm gonna just keep playing with the values. So after playing for a little with these two values, I'm okay with the results. So I'm gonna go up to the sub level. Uh, already set up the dop import, the fluid compressed to reduce the size of the cache. And now I'm gonna cache this. I'm gonna be back in a few minutes. So, so far it's looking good. I'm happy with the result. Uh, we have some fluid sticking to the collider, other parts they are kind of uh, still pulling on the side. So again, the idea is to play with this variable viscosity. And another thing we can do is to not only have a high viscosity on the collision, but also uh, to start making this viscosity uh, grow and spread to the non-viscous part. So we can start uh, little by little uh, making all the fluid viscous. So I'm gonna go back to the .NET. So back to the soft solver in the .NET, we can create an attribute blur. This is gonna let us uh, little by little make the high viscosity grow and, and blend with the non-viscous areas. So we're gonna on the attribute type viscosity and then we can change the influence type to proximity. And we're gonna be playing mainly with the proximity radius and also the blurring iteration. This setting is gonna be the main uh, controller in this situation. Uh, the higher you go, the more it's gonna blur per step and uh, the more you can spread. So you can start playing with this, uh, with this setting uh, to find a value you, you like. And as you can see, little by little, the areas that are, uh, they have high viscosity are gonna start uh, blurring and blending and mixing with the non-viscous uh, fluid. So feel free to play with this value. I'm gonna go down because I still want to have some splash on the side and more pulling liquid. Uh, now I feel it's too sticky, the, the whole thing. So I'm gonna keep playing with this value. I'm gonna be back in a few minutes. So after tweaking these settings for a bit, these are the settings that are working for me. I did went a bit uh, lower on the particle separation just to have a bit more quality. I'm still working in, in low res, but I'm gonna cache this. I'm gonna be back once it's done. So if we take a look at the original cache where we didn't have the attribute blur and the viscosity was not spreading, uh, we can see that it's looking good, but there is a big difference with the second one. This is the second cache with the attribute blur. And now we can see how by the end of the time frame, the attribute blur is spreading the high viscosity value to the other areas of the fluid. So little by little, the whole fluid is going to start being uh, more viscous uh, since we're going to be working overall with high viscosity in other areas. To finish up, I went through the meshing process, then transfer the viscosity attribute, create a peak node to tighten the, the mesh, and then uh, I'm gonna create a color based on the viscosity attribute. You can play, if you want, darker color on the high viscosity areas. And then in Karma, we can use this color attribute, and we can connect this into the base color of the material, so now, if we go to Karma XPU, we're gonna see the different uh, color. It's gonna be a bit darker in the high viscosity areas. And once we are happy with the end result, we can just hit render and see the final outcome. Okay, guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, using a sub solver and attribute transfer just to play with some variable viscosity based on the proximity to colliders. Uh, and thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment it really helps to support the channel and i will see you on the next one